Commissioner Ryan, thanks for joining us. When I asked you to come on, we didn't even know about these storms. We're going to talk about the steep drop in the rig counts in the Permian Basin in Texas, which I'll get to in a second. But I've got to ask you what you're hearing about the oil and gas infrastructure in Texas, given Hurricane or soon to be Hurricane Laura on its way. Well, thanks, Brian, for having me on. As you said, there is a there's a lot of shutdowns happening today of current you know operations in the Gulf. Uh, you know, we're forecasting a Category 3 hurricane right now, and, you know, these models aren't perfect, but it's gotten, they've gotten a lot more accurate for Laura, and, and so we feel pretty confident that we know what's coming. Uh, I would say this, we are going to experience some loss of production, and that's going to probably affect pricing a little bit in the short term. Long term, I don't think there's going to be a really major impact. Most of these facilities can withstand that, are going to be safe to operate, so even though they're going to shut down temporarily, probably back in service here in a week or so as people are, are coming back after the hurricane passes through. So I'm optimistic that there's not going to be a major impact to, to major facilities in the Gulf. The one thing that I learned literally being on the ground in Houston and Galveston for about a week during Hurricane Harvey was how bad the situation can get quickly, but how better, much better it can also get quickly. They've kind of figured out a lot of the safety measures there as well as just natural drainage was far more dramatic than I'd ever thought. The refineries, they're closed-lipped with me about where exactly their status is right now. What are you hearing? Are they still running? Are they shutting down? Yeah, most of the refineries are still running right now. They are they're taking precautions. Uh, but, Brian, you're, you're right to be thinking about the, the inland sort of long-term issues about oil prices and oil markets. Because what we never can tell is, is sometimes these storms come in and they park off the coast. And, it, and it's not really the winds that are the big problem for the refineries, it's the flooding. And the flooding can play havoc in a lot of different ways. Uh, one of the ones that, that you don't realize is sometimes the refinery can continue to operate. The problem is we can't get employees to the refineries because of flooding. So they're, they're making preparations today, uh, all of those Gulf Coasts, especially the ones in, in the Beaumont and Port Arthur areas and in Louisiana, to be able to run with minimal staffs, uh, to, to be able to isolate certain units that they don't need to run right now, so the, 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 probably the big thing to be watching is what will the impact be of this hurricane on the refining infrastructure? As you know, refineries right now around the country are really challenged. Refining margins have been really slim the last three, four months now. And so this, this additional uh, the challenge on yeah. our refining infrastructure is the thing to watch. Yeah, I remember being on Interstate 45, going to Galveston, where boats were going down the interstate trying to rescue cars as well. Ryan, obviously, we wake up to the news. We Again, we, we found out last night, ExxonMobil out of the Dow for the first time in 92 years. You got rig counts in Texas at pretty much record lows, despite a slight gain last week. What is the long-term future of the oil and gas industry in Texas? Well, you know, it's interesting. The, the last three months have been actually some of the most stable oil prices we've seen in a long time. They're hovering right around $40 a barrel for the last three months. And we, especially given the the sort of tumultuous times that we're in, that's, that's interesting. Uh, what, what I will say that, that we, we are looking at is in the short run, we're going to continue to be price challenged. Refining margins are slim. Oil prices, $40 a barrel, really isn't, isn't – it's not great pricing. However, the, the thing that a lot of people are still missing, when you look out two, three years down the road, the demand for energy, especially gasoline, diesel, kerosene globally, is all forecasted to, to, to go up, not only – up from where we are today, but even up next to historic levels. And there's not going to be enough oil and gas in the world to fuel that demand. There's just, now that so much capital has been pulled out of the market to produce new oil, uh, I'm very bullish on oil when you're talking two, three years down the road. I actually uh, think that next year we could see as high as 60 or $70 a barrel oil by the end of next year. It's just that right wow, now- Because production all, keeps coming offline? Exactly. There's just, you know, it takes a lot of money to continue to produce new barrels of oil, especially in the Permian Basin, uh, where we're talking about rig counts being so low. And, and when you look at de when demand for oil gets back to $100 a barrel and the world's only producing 95 million barrels of oil by that point, I mean, you're, you're going to see real price spikes. And I, I, I have a hard time seeing that there's not a way for those oil prices to come back so high. 